Good morning, everyone. I will call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for May 2021 to order. The time is now 9.01 a.m. We are doing these meetings through Zoom because of COVID-19 and Governor Wolf's emergency declarations and stay-at-home orders. We normally do the Pledge of Allegiance, but we are going to omit that due to the telepresence nature of these meetings. Uh, at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. Uh, Sue, have we received any written or phoned in comments throughout the week this week? There were none. Okay. Is there anyone on the Zoom session who would like to make a public comment? Uh, I have some comments on the uh, road inspection that was done. I don't know if this is the time or you'd like to wait till later. Um, well, we actually have that as an agenda item. I think it's the third item on the agenda, so we can circle back to that. Excellent. Okay. Seeing no other comments, we'll move into the main items of the meeting. The first one is the emergency declaration. This was made back at the March 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting with a provision to extend for a period lasting until further action by the board, signed into action on April 1st. Um, as of this time, I suggest that we continue to leave that in place as we have in, in prior months uh, until we know that the, the imminent threat of, of COVID has more or less cleared and we can return to a, some semblance of normality. I believe uh, Governor Wolf uh, uh, reissued and extended the uh, uh, border as well. Okay. Yeah. That, then we're, we're certainly in, in alignment then. PSATs. Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Act 537. There's a couple of uh, sub bullet points on this particular one. The former SCO cannot produce perk test reports for one of the property owners in which a perk test was done. It's uh, 205 Main Street. Our current SEO, Alan Madera, who's uh, been kind enough to join the call today, uh, cannot issue the permit for the septic system and will have to redo the, the perk tests at the township's expense. What we are going to do is then turn around and rebill Gary for the tests based on the fact that he is not able to furnish the proof of, of work around those things. They were billed, they were paid, but the, the proper paperwork was not created or filed to allow that homeowner to actually do anything with it. So the intent here is to get the homeowner squared away as quickly as possible, and then we'll figure out the billing back to Gary for that, uh, er I guess, error by omission on his part, so that everything is, is squared away at the end of the day. Okay. Next is the income study. Uh, we have a, a, a Colleen Terry, who is a referral from Jim McCarthy, a McCarthy Engineering's firm. Uh, about the income study that we'd like to do. Income studies are good for two years. And uh, the, the next phase of that would be uh, us talking about the letter that we would like to send out to everyone about the on-lot management ordinance and the required pump out and maintenance. So uh, Colleen, if you, if you would take a few seconds, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and what you can help us do. Absolutely, sure. And thank you. Good morning. I appreciate being added to uh, your busy agenda this morning. Uh, my name is Colleen Terry, um, president of Econ Partners. We are a um, small uh, economic development firm based in Radnor, Pennsylvania, Delaware County. Uh, we have an office in Harrisburg as well. Uh, I actually live just outside of Hershey, uh, born and raised in Lancaster County, so I'm certainly familiar with uh, your township and your location. Uh, and uh, we do, uh, we've worked with Jim McCarthy, I'm going to say for four or five years now on behalf of the borough of Why I'm Missing. Uh, he is also the engineer there and, and we, our firm has uh, done a significant amount of, of public funding and uh, including uh, you know, flood control, wastewater, um, transportation, that type of funding. Our firm uh, has been in existence almost 10 years now. It'll be 10 years uh, just at the beginning of 2022. And prior to that, I uh, did work for 15 years at a, a larger economic development firm based in Harrisburg. So uh, we are a five-person firm. Uh, we work probably, I would say, 60% with, with public entities, either municipalities, authorities, counties, um, we have a number of, of public colleges and, and universities as clients as well, and we do do some um, private development work. Primarily, we do funding for either infrastructure or adaptive reuse projects, um, you know, buildings, sites uh, that are either contaminated, buildings that need to be, you know, reused, redeveloped. And we do have a, a partner firm, a sub firm that does economic impact studies 
Uh, and I, I wanted to hear a little bit more about your income study that you wanted to conduct, but we also work quite a bit with uh, the funding sources that Jim has already provided to you in terms of opportunities to fund uh, your SOAR improvement project along 422. And I am familiar with the budget and, and Jim and I did have a chance to connect uh, earlier uh, this week on what the details are in your time frame. Uh, so we'd be happy to present a proposal, spend a little more time at a, a subsequent meeting explaining you know, who we are and how we work. Uh, but really I'm interested to hear uh, from the township from you what it is that you're intending to do and, and how we could possibly uh, help provide service there. Okay, so the, the intent here is is twofold. Um, we ultimately are essentially on the clock, as I'm sure Jim has has mentioned from the prior board submitting yes. a, an Act 537 plan and having it approved. Yes. So the income study needs to do two things. It needs to be applicable to if we have to go through the, the efforts of what uh, the DEP is requiring per the, the plan. Uh, but we also are looking to get detail on being able to potentially push back on if it is actually unaffordable or it is financially unfeasible. So it has to be usable in its full extent, but it also hopefully will give us the, the detail that we need about uh, making revisions or Understood. updates or modifications of the plan as it stands currently. Okay. So user rate study and, and essentially understanding and, and putting the case together for whether or not you, you actually do have to, to engage in the project, you could you know, increase rates, adjust rates to afford the project or push back on DEP and say, you know, hey, we can't afford this project. We're going to need grant and other support from the department or precisely. consideration. Okay. Precisely, Fantastic. precisely. Okay. Um, Jim or Irene, is there anything that you would like to add in addition to that? No, no, that was it. I mean, spot on. Thank you. Okay. Great. Okay, very good. So uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Let us know what, what we need to get to you, uh, subsequent meetings, I'll, I'll make sure that you have all the information. We always keep the, the Zoom join information exactly the same. So if you have it for one, you'll be able to join any of the meetings. Fantastic. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing that proposal. Excellent. And if it's uh, if uh, I'm permitted to, if I may reach out back out to Jim next week and just get additional detail on the yeah. study and, and the information. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, I think you on my that email chain, you have my email as well. Feel free I to do. reach out to me directly. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a good one. Okay. Next uh, portion of the Act 537 is getting a letter out to property owners for the pump out and inspection. Uh, Alan Madera, who is our, our new SEO, is uh, actually in the habit of doing this. He does this with another uh, couple of municipalities. Um, Alan, since you are on the call, this is probably the, the prime time to, to talk about this. Sure. Uh, first, <clears throat> let me thank all of you for uh, considering me as your new SEO, um, and it's a pleasure to meet all of you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've been pretty successful um, with uh, Act 537 planning, and I've based my, since I took over in 2014 as the owner of my company, um, I've based my, my business plan on developing sewage management programs for municipalities. So this is what my intended focus really truly is. Um, my biggest success so far has been Kumru Township. Uh, we have a very successful program that's been running now for about five years. Um, and our uh, participation and cooperation from the residents is probably around 97%. So we're, we're doing really well. I mean, that's a guess, but I have very few enforcement issues and I have yet to issue a citation. Uh, there might be some coming up, but it's, it's very, very uh, seldom. Um, so it's a successful program. I have also consulted with numerous townships that have had varying degrees of success. So I know what works and what doesn't. And let me just take this moment to say that I took some time to read your ordinance and the sample letter, Mr. McCarthy, that you sent me. And I think that you guys are really in the right direction. You're, um, the broad strokes are all there. So there's probably some fine tuning. Um, and some of that I could probably, there's some questions and back and forth that's going to occur between me and uh, Sue probably, and also between me and McCarthy Engineering, so I can get up to speed and get the information I need to get things um, uh, going. Some of it may have to, have to uh, set the timing back a little bit, because it takes time to set up the administration, mm -hmm. okay? But after reviewing everything, I, I guess the bottom line, the most important thing to tell you is, is that you got it pointed in the right direction. It's, it's, it's you know, I don't know, B plus, <laughs> okay? 
So I really feel good about that because not every municipality does that. They, 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 they try to do things that, 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 that cause more difficulties. Now, um, one of the things, and it is in your ordinance, it gives us the uh, uh, latitude to conduct inspections um, as the agent of the township on behalf of the township, the SEO is doing the inspections. I think that is far better than ha having pumpers responsible for inspections for a number of reasons, which we can go into if you have, if, I'm just trying to be brief. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I found what works and what doesn't. And what doesn't work is, um, is uh, uh, in simple terms, pumpers don't want to report their customers. Okay, so that's, just, that's, that's one of the issues. Okay, another issue, and this is in your ordinance, is about pumper registration. Now, I don't believe it's necessary for the pumpers to be registered with the township that um, homeowners can use any pumper that they want. The pumpers are already licensed and registered by the state. And if they're not conducting the inspections, then they're not acting as an agent for the township. And there's no liability on the behalf of the township. Okay, I'm doing, I'm doing the inspections or, or my employees are doing the inspections. Whereas the opposite would be true if they are doing in inspections on behalf of the, they're, now they're an agent of the township. Now you got to have them registered and you're, 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 you're carrying more liability. There are some townships that do that and I think it is very unwise. Um, so beyond that, I don't want to get into too much nitty gritty. I, I'm here to answer any questions that you all might have and then we can start the process of setting this up and actually getting it um, up and running. Okay, so I think the, the big question is what is our next step with you to get this up and running? Because I think I, I speak for the board and Jim, Irene, please step in if I'm out of line, but we want to make sure that people start to fall into line with this, but we don't want to be overly draconian about it. We don't want to beat people over the head and say, oh, you only have two months to do this. We want to make sure that it's done, nice. done right. It, it takes and, time. Yes, yeah, and we want to make sure that it's not... So one bad. thing... One thing yeah. that worked out really well is when we first launched Kumru's program, we sent a letter out to all residents, okay? Later, at the beginning of each cycle, for the, they'll get another letter telling, okay, now it's your turn to pump. But the, the introductory letter was really important, and I think that's what you've got started right now with the draft that you gave me. Also, I think in the beginning, it's, it's a good idea for the letters to actually come from Marion Township and have Marion Township on the envelope. People see Berks and Virotech on their envelope. They don't know who I am. They might think it's junk mail and throw it away. So if we really want to reach people in the beginning, you know, even if it's even if we have a Berks and Virotech uh, letterhead in the letter, the envelope should be coming from Marion Township. So I think what we need to do is refine your letter a little bit and get that out to people. And we can do that relatively quickly um, because you're, we're introducing what's going to be coming. Then what we do is we work on setting up our database with my software at my office. Um, most of that information I can get from Sue or McCarthy. And um, once I have the database set up and we select the actual start dates, because I think some of your start dates are going to be a little too soon. Okay. I agree. Um, so once we set up the actual start, then we can start notifying the people in the different districts that you've set up. I need to figure out how many properties are in each district and things like that. And that's all tax record stuff. I can work that all out with McCarthy or Sue. So um, that's, that's really the next step is to uh, probably notify the, the residents that uh, this is coming and that they'll be receiving further notification when it's, uh, it's their turn. And um, we just take the time now and start setting things up. And when we're ready, we launch. I would think maybe it would be reasonable to launch in January of 22. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's certainly doable for sure and it would probably be the, the least amount of imposition on property owners for that because like i said we want to get it done we need to get it done but this is something that has been a long time coming it's i'd rather give it an extra six months to make sure that it's done properly than to try and rush it may i ask do you know just round number real close guess number of on lot properties in the township other than stonecroft that has a sewer and then that one property I think it's Dutch Valley, mm -hmm. every, every house, or I should, let me, let me rephrase that. Every property in the township is on lot. Otherwise. Do you know how many properties there are total? Off the top of my head? No, but I'd have to look. I know rough I just, population figures, but I don't know how many. I get that information yeah. from McCarthy. He's, you know, the mapping is part of this. 
Um, uh, I need that, to update. That would, that would be part of the tax list, but yeah. I have no idea the number. We'll get yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah I, have the, I have the tax list here somewhere that I had previously gone through that suit to create I have and, and Alan I'll actually send it to you it might need a little updating but I, I had gone through and already scrubbed the tax list to get uh, property address and owner address for the purposes of sending letters out um, awesome. so I might be able to take some of the some of the lead time off on that but we'd have to make sure there hasn't been anything that changed in and that's always fluid. Of months. We're, yes. we're never going to be 100% because people buy and sell houses yeah. and people die or go to nursing homes or what have you and it's always fluid so okay all right well, that's, I mean, those are our, those are our, basically our, our, our starting points. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll connect with you at some point this week. We'll refine the letter a little bit, change some of the, the timing around. Uh, we'll circulate it with the rest of the board, hopefully have something that we're A-OK -okay with by Thursday night, and we can at least send out the opening salvo of communication around this while you get the administrative aspect of it set up. I think that's a real good idea. It lets the township know, lets all the residents know that this is coming and, um, that you're not being draconian, as you said, you know, that you're trying to do things in a, in a reasonable way and give people enough time to be prepared to do it. Okay, very good. Sue, Irene, Jim, do you have any questions for Alan? Yes, Alan. Alan, um, are you able to just include a line in your bill uh, that includes the uh, homeowner's address, the billing address? That's all I'm asking. Oh, certainly. I, yeah. I sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. And so I just want to make sure like the bill and the check, because I, I know sometimes checks from people aren't necessarily the resident that the pump out or the inspection was done for. Are, so. are you the treasurer or, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. <laughs> are you that's, a supervisor? That's, that's Irene Soloski. Yeah. She's one of the other supervisors. Okay. Okay. So um, my my office staff does a lot of that. And Jane, my, I really re re rely on my, uh, my lady Jane that works for me and, and Karen, who are both bookkeepers. Okay. Um, so the, it, it, we'll have to have some back and forth on that to get it fine tuned. If there's okay. an issue, just let me know and I'll, I'll address it. Yeah, no, it just makes it a little bit easier for me to track the work. That's we try to do that. And I think we try to always provide the tax ID number too, but let me, I'll double check on that. Yeah. It's just the, the homeowners, whatever location that the work is being uh, service that if you could just include a line on there because it's on some of the bills it's not on all the bills and I love your bills thank you <laughs> oh well <laughs> yeah we try to we try to be clear now yeah. a lot of times for like new home construction there is no address yet yep mm -hmm. so you know we can just, that's why we like to use the tax ID numbers as much as possible yeah, whatever whatever I could link the information to yeah. wonderful okay thank you thank you Sure, and I, I love your idea about sending out a quarterly letter. This way the residents know, hey, this is time. And, and we can certainly calendar that and, and send that out. Very good. Okay, phenomenal. We, we all look forward to working with you, Alan. Thank you. Sounds like you're very organized, Alan. Well, I try to be. I try to be. Good. Okay. Uh, you're welcome to stay. Otherwise, you're, you're welcome to depart. But uh, I don't know how it's... Exciting it's going to be for the remainder of the meeting for you. Well, thank you. I will do part, but I'm excited to be doing this for Marion Township. And uh, I just uh, was asked to develop a, a similar program for Lake Winona for that development. That's 1,400 homes. So I'll be doing you and Lake Winona at the same time. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm excited. This is good. This is good for my business, but it's also, I like to, to uh, serve the residents and this is a good thing. So thank you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you very much. Have a good thank rest you. of the weekend. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, next up on the Act 537 portion of the agenda is uh, McCarthy Engineering is still looking into how many EDUs are remaining at the Womelsdorf Sewer Authority plant. Uh, he also had given us a list of the funding sources, which is in our, our supervisor packet. Um, we had gone over that previously, so I'm not going to dwell too much on that. Um, and uh, McCarthy Engineering believes that uh, as we work with Alan, that will actually work favorably for us if we are looking to make changes such as anything that's supported by the income study uh, in terms of how DEP receives that request. Um, they were quite pleased that we had appointed Alan as our new SEO. Um, he's got a, a good reputation within the industry and with DEP, so we, we're in a, a favorable light there in terms of commentary or, or criticism about a specific aspect of things. It's not just us. Um, coming across as being obstinate or difficult about doing this, it actually has, has weight behind it. 
we don't have any other questions about the Act 537, we'll move on to the third item on the agenda, which is the Stonecroft Street inspection. Um, McCarthy Engineering had supplied a, an inspection report, and uh, we do have uh, at least one resident from Stonecroft on regarding some concerns raised about that report. Uh, Fred? All right. Um, okay, we have not seen McCarthy's report. Uh, we got the early one from 2020, but we have not seen the report. Uh, I attended the walk down. Uh, McCarthy sent a gentleman, uh, asked him if he had gotten our set of comments where we had walked down the road and identified and marked up the road. And he said, no, Sue, you told me you had sent him to McCarthy. So McCarthy decided to sit on what we gave him as a, an area of concern. I just walked down the roads yesterday and took a bunch of pictures. If you'd like to let me, want me to share that screen, I can do that. Yeah, ab absolutely. Or if, yeah. if you want to email them to us, we'd love to have them for hard I, I copy. Have a, as well. I have a lot of pictures. Um, so uh, let me see if I can get the, uh, okay, here's the picture manager. Yep, so I've, um, there we go. Since so I temporarily made you a host, so you should be able to uh, should be able to okay. present. Um, basically, when I go in here and we look at the street, you can see multiple cracks. Uh, initially, he was telling us, "Yeah, one crack, it's not a problem." But when we see multiple cracks like this, uh, I'm saying we've lost part of the foundation of this road, and these cracks are relatively close together, but the uh, gentleman, I'm not sure if he's even an engineer, uh, chose not to mark them. Uh, here's another one. This is the marking that they identified small subsets of the, uh, of the area as needing repairs. And I asked Jim Harris, who I think is the anonymous Jim on the uh, call with us, uh, and Don Smith to re-walk walk down this thing. And their comment was, it's putting, you know, they're basically just showing a small set of what is damaged. And we uh, basically are putting blowout patches on a worn out tire. And, uh, but here's another example where the cracks are, you know, these cracks are 12 inches apart. They, uh, and what's happened is this is the base course of asphalt, which should have been fairly strong, but because whatever is underneath it was weak, as, some, as vehicles rolled over it, you got this cracking. And there's a lot of this cracking going on uh, in the roadways. Uh, this is an area he didn't bother to mark because he deemed it not bad enough to require attention. Uh, my biggest concern, well, even more so than, as you look in here, you can see all these cracks. It's a multitude of cracks. Again, it's an unmarked area. So he didn't deem it needing attention. Uh, one of the really bad areas is on Loganbury. Now this is a road that's a cul-de-sac. The, uh, the only traffic is basically light vehicles and I guess the heaviest is a trash truck, but it has numerous cracks. Um, not really easy to see them gray on gray with the camera, but- No, 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 you can, you can definitely see them. Yeah, and again, this area was not deemed to be bad enough to require remediation. I mean, there's no cut marks around here that says you're going to cut this out. Uh, hearsay, one of the town residents commented early on that the stone used in the foundation course below this, this base course of asphalt was um, just what they had on hand and they'd run through their rock crusher and hadn't been cleaned. And again, that's third party information that there's no way to document it. This is the end of Loganberry looking back and 
you know, you can see numerous cracks. He marked three areas in, in the, uh, the end here. There's one to the right that's probably a 20 by 8 area. There's one to the left that's equal size, and then there's one more in the middle that he, uh, uh, I think it's, this was not in the marked area, but it's right next to it. Uh, and much of Loganbury has this kind of cracking in it, which uh, we think is a failure of the foundation. And uh, Jim Harris, I think, uh, Jim, if you're there and can speak to that, um, I'd appreciate it. Maybe it wasn't Jim. <laughs> Oh, I, either way, I'm not an engineer, but I must say, like, just from looking at that, those are some pretty noticeable, they're pretty pronounced cracks. Um, so what I'd like to, to throw out there as, a, as the next steps is we will follow up with Jim McCarthy's firm of, of getting the, the, the most recent report to you. Um, I've personally not seen it cross my inbox yet, so it may not have come out at all. It may not be that you haven't received it. It may not be that any of us have received it yet. So we'll follow up about that. Um, I'd like to ask that you send us the pictures as well so that I can follow up with McCarthy Engineering about that specifically, ask some very pointed questions therein. Um, and Jim and Irene, what are your thoughts about potentially doing a walkthrough as a group over no on the, as, those, uh, as a supervisory board, McCarthy Engineering, some representation from the, Stone, the Stonecroft Homeowners Association and in person go through some things, look at it and get some commentary directly from the engineer about, yes, it's a pretty big crack. It looks worse than it is. It only really needs to be crack sealed because of this, this, and this, or nope, that should have been marked or whatever the case is. Really, rather than have this kind of asynchronous back and forth, get everybody in one place at the same time and really kind of hash out the finer details. I agree. Okay. I agree. I think it's important that Jim McCarthy come himself and, uh, and inspect this. I'm over here. Because it, it, it appears that there was not an adequate inspection yes. done, Jim, because these cracks are pretty big. And uh, I don't think we want to leave Stonecroft. No, I got to say. deal with this in the future. So, you know, Stone Group's going to move out of here soon, and we want to make sure that this is done properly. Yeah, I must say, Fred, I echo your concerns. If this was a, a base course that we had put down on a, a public road, and it had delays between first coat, like the base coat, and getting the final finish on it, I would have concern. I would be pushing back on the contractors based on just what you, you have presented here now. I so, agree. Yeah, you know, that's, that's basically it. There's, there's a number of these places. Um, much of Loganbury, I think, is at serious risk, um, and there are other portions of uh, Sweet Birch, uh, some of which beyond where the construction traffic came in, um, <coughs> sort of east of that. Yeah, and possibly a walk down with uh, you folks from the, the board and McCarthy. Uh, I'd like to know what the credentials are of the gentleman that came out and did this inspection work. Um, that really wasn't announced, didn't get any cards from him other than when I, the only thing really discussion I had with him was when I asked him if McCarthy had shared our markup of the roadways uh, with areas of concern. And he said, no, he hadn't seen it. So well, that's, that's very concerning to me because you took the time to do that, mm -hmm. sent it to him and then he comes out and he's unprepared. So again, that's why I think it's important that Jim McCarthy come with us personally and look at this. I agree. That would be appreciated. Okay, rest assured, we will, we will be doing everything in our power to make sure that you guys don't have a, a poor roadway to deal with for any point after the time that it's paved. But My serious concern is that if we put down another lift of asphalt on top of this when it's scheduled, all these cracks are just going to propagate up through and uh, effectively destroys that lift. Uh, this base core should have been a structural piece that was intact. With these cracks, it's obvious it's not intact. So, yeah. Looking yeah. forward to the walk down. Hope I can be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to agree, and we'll try to make sure that everybody's schedules align to be able to do that because 
to put it lightly, I'd very much like to have you and, uh, for example, Jim, who's on the call, I see him on the camera now, a um, couple of people who have had a, a very high level of participation in this thus far, I'd like you to be present as well. Oh, good. Looks like we can add this to the list of shortcomings that the Stone Group has taken in this development, and uh, they need to be called on the carpet for it. One of the things that I'm going to inquire specifically with McCarthy is I know when you do public roadways, I don't offhandedly know the requirements for private roadways, but you usually have to certify out the material that you're using, whether it's the sub base, the base, the asphalt, that there has to be like uh, documented types, proof, samples. There's a whole science that goes into that. So um, if some... If the rumor mail has generated that they were just crushing up anything they could find and putting it down there, that really isn't the right thing to do, just as a common sense standpoint. But uh, we may be able to find some sort of artifact or proof that potentially might dispel that. Or if it's not there, that might be uh, might be proof of inadequacy just by it not being present. So we'll we'll gladly work with you on that and try to tr again try to make sure that this isn't a uh, a big problem for you and the other residents of Stonecroft going forward. Yeah, the uh, based on the timeline, as I understand it, for these roads, we may get the response from McCarthy. Oh, the previous guy um, didn't do it, or you know, it was the previous guy. So uh, you can be prepared for that part. In order to sort of verify what was actually there, we we were willing to step up as Stonecroft. Um, as Stonecroft and pay for some coring to be done because a core sample of what's underneath this would be very telling. And um, that was rejected by Stone Group. Yeah, I think we're in kind of the sticky situation of you guys don't technically own the road. We don't own the road. It's owned by Stone Group. So unless they agree to let their, their road be cored, there's really not much we can do to force their hand. Your engineer could if he was yeah. so yes he can so no. determination so that may be one of the, the follow-up asks from the walkthrough is that specifically depending on what the the general course of conversation unfolds like but uh right we'll, we'll keep you informed we will follow up and, and see about getting that report like i said it may not be a situation where you got left out it's i haven't seen it yet either so it may may not have been circulated as of this moment in time you know, I believe Stone Group was taking most of the notes, so McCarthy may be waiting for them to give them the notes so that he can seal it. But if he seals it, it's got his mm -hmm. his license on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we'll uh, we'll be in touch for sure, and we'll try to get that scheduled shortly. If there's anything uh, that comes up between now and then, please, as always, don't hesitate to reach out. Call the township, email the township. We'll be happy to help. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Okay. There we go. I got. I got you, Fred. Your okay. sharing is stopped. Okay. So next item on the agenda. Let me change my view back. Is the culvert at Marion Drive near Jacob Weiss. Uh, we are waiting to hear back on the dirt, gravel, and low volume road grant uh, to see if it has been approved. If it has, we'll move forward with getting that uh, culvert that is in dire need of replacement replaced. Um, similarly, we have a culvert on Marion Drive uh, north of School Road. There was uh, an inspection report circulated by McCarthy Engineering and actually scrolling to it now. I think is for everybody following along on the board that's in the second packet. That uh, for the time being, it's their opinion that the southbound lane can remain open, uh, but should be inspected and monitored for cracks regularly uh, for any openings develop in the, uh, developing in the existing paving. Um, we also should <laughs> replace the double crossing pipes as soon as possible. And uh, that was one that we had asked for some information on uh, for costs around replacing that in similar fashion to the uh, next item that's on the agenda, which is the culvert at Sheridan Road. Uh, this is at Gerald Hoover's farm near 540 Sheridan Road. The hole actively in the road is getting larger. 
uh, we received a price of around $90,000 to do the replacement. Uh, the box culvert, which is a 12 foot by four foot, is a, a precast piece that can be lowered into place. The piece itself is $36,000, which seems pricey, but it's actually, from an economic standpoint, it's the cheapest installation that we would be able to do using our, our road crew, which does save us on, on labor costs for having to hire an, an external firm. Uh, the end walls are also another $12,000, and then guide rails are the next biggest component of that $90,000 price tag. Guide rails are very expensive and are exceptionally expensive right now. Um, our road crew will be doing the majority of the work, and I'm waiting to hear back from McCarthy on what we need permit-wise to get started, as I'd like to do that late summer into the fall, uh, towards the kind of end of the season, but I'd like to get that done this year. Um, we do have this within the budget, so we'll need to move on this so we don't have that road degrade entirely and have a closure. Next up is the road projects for 2021. That was the uh, large group of roads that we had put out for oil and chip. This was advertised in the newspaper and put on pen bid uh, with bids being received until 10 a.m. on May 26th. Um, bids will be awarded at the Board of Supervisors meeting on May 27th at 7 p.m. So uh, we should hopefully by the end of the this week, like Thursday night, we'll have a selection of bids to go through. I'm going to be asked that McCarthy Engineering, if he's not already intending to be present, be present to go through that along with everything else that we want to talk to McCarthy Engineering about. Okay, uh, next up also in the area of road work is the Catterman Hill and Stouchburg Road intersection. This was the intersection that was identified as dangerous through a, a complaint that we had received and we reviewed. Uh, an ordinance is needed for the uh, placement of those dangerous intersection and stop ahead signs, uh, which by the nature of not having a, a real enforcement action for those signs, we've already placed them. We're just making it proper through the ordinance. Um, we will need to approve that and uh, send a notice, if not already done so, from McCarthy to the property owner about removing the bushes that are obstructing the line of sight. So we'll keep moving on that. We'll have some more things for Thursday night, and we'll make sure that McCarthy Engineering has sent out that letter to the property owner. Uh, similarly, Jim, I know you had asked about the, the rocks. Um, there should be a follow-up letter going out to that homeowner now that the, the weather is better. We had originally reached out towards the end of winter when it was still brutally cold, and uh, we wanted to give them some time with warm weather to actually move those stones, because speaking honestly, I, I don't know if I'd want to try to move some giant rocks when it's like 12 degrees outside. So uh, we'll, we'll keep following up on that and make sure that those are removed from the right of way, but uh, similar fashion, McCarthy Engineering should be sending a letter. Next up is the Aikens Accounting Audit. Uh, Irene, do we have any other updates other than they're still working on the few last things? I guess it's just in for final review. Actually contacted uh, the accounting firm uh, just a few days ago. And uh, for the most part, no news is good news. There's no big red flags or anything. So, and uh, they said they were available for other questions. I sent them an email and I got a response within a few minutes. So very nice group to work with. Okay, very good. Next item. Peter, can, yes. can I jump in here? Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. While we're while we're on roads, I you and I had exchanged some email last night about the flooding issue mm -hmm. uh, on West West Penn Avenue, and uh, while Jim's on here, isn't there anything that we can do to alleviate this problem until the homeowners on that side uh, put their swale in and, and and take care of this? It's our pipe, I understand. Is it it's the right, overloading and going the, across the lane. Is it the right gym on the call right now? Well, maybe not. Then. I don't think I don't think we have Jim McCarthy on the call. Um, so real quick, J uh, Jim Brooks, um, I would be delighted to make a change. But when when we had talked to Andy and Jim McCarthy previously, the issue comes from the fact that there there was a swale pre-existing on the neighboring property. That swale has since basically flattened out it's not there in any sense of the word anymore and it's not there enough to be doing what it needs to do that changes the dynamic of the stormwater runoff which creates an overloading of that pipe so the water is going to naturally collect there and there's really not much we can do yes it is our pipe but if we were to plug the pipe up we could have a number of adverse situations we may not even legally be allowed to do that in any any sort of quick fashion either um 
But if we were to stop it up, we could have a situation where it dams on the other side of the road and then over floods the road, takes the road out, and then ultimately still floods the property owner. Um, the best thing to do is what's actually already happening is because that homeowner is building on that adjacent property, the, the addition of that swale was made part of the stormwater requirements for building that. So once that's back in place, the, the way that water is supposed to flow is it's supposed to collect from the, the higher point because everything basically runs downhill from the, the other property onto the property that's being impacted. That swale kind of divvies it up gently along a longer path of the roadway. There are a number of pipes along there and it's supposed to be going through like three or four of them, two or three, whatever the, the number is, rather than kind of aggregating in that one specific pipe. It, it's not so much about the pipe as it is upstream. There's really no change that we can directly make that's going to have a, a lasting or even immediate impact for that homeowner other than getting that swale in. So if we put a trench there, a temporary trench until the homeowners correct the problem, we can't do that? Don't we have part if, of the right-of-way? If it's in the right-of-way, and I think one of the, the immediate concerns was we may not have enough room to do that, and we also may be, we may be running into a situation where the trench would not be able to be big enough that you'd, you'd get a little bit of, a, of it away, but you'd still have that, that water getting into that area, infiltrating into the ground, flooding their basement. So you I'm gotta happy. Feel, you got to feel for these people. Oh, yeah. It's my... getting flooded with six to eight inches of water. It's wiping out their driveway. And now it's moving to the neighboring property and affecting their driveway, their shed, their backyard. I mean, this is, it's a major problem. And I understand that we can't use public funds for private property. But we do own, we certainly own part of that right away. And I'm hopeful that we could at least give them some temporary fix until it's done properly. Uh, okay. You can well, imagine eight inches of water in your basement every time it rains. You can't put yeah. anything on the floor. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I, based on where I live, I know that uh, that threat of having water in your basement all too well. It's not a, it's not a pleasant yeah. thing. So I'll reach back out again and see if there is literally, even if it's a little outside of the box, if there's anything that we can do to try to, to shift water volume around. Even in, and I'm just going to spitball here because I'm not an engineer, even if it's something dumb like getting a big piece of that black corrugated pipe and the one with the holes in it, just running a huge section of it off of the outlet so that the water is forced to disperse over a long distance right next to the road. I don't know if that would even yeah. remotely work, but let's, let's see if there's anything we can do, even if it's a little unorthodox. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Next up on the agenda is the website. The website is now live. Uh, MarionTWPBurks.com is up. Uh, we are waiting from Civic on a couple of things. Uh, they supplied me a username, but I, I have not gotten my admin password yet, so I can't directly make changes. Uh, I do have a couple of change tickets in for things that I, I noticed and Sue noticed. And uh, I'm actually going to share my screen so that everybody can see it. That... Uh, it's there, it exists. Uh, we're getting, there's supposed to be a background in the, the header part, which was a, a nice panorama of Marion Township of a, a farm that Sue had taken. Um, I'm getting them to shrink the size of this ball icon by about 25%. We're gonna be replacing that with a, something a little more customized at some point, with a, like a Marion Township logo, uh, but shrinking the overall size of that. And uh, we'll be starting to populate more content on this in terms of meeting agendas, links to the YouTube video repository, um, community uh, notices, like we have the community yard sale up on the calendar, but uh, really getting a lot of the things that people will need to be aware of or need to have access to onto the site now that it is uh, built structurally and available to everybody. So turned a major milestone uh, about a week, week and a half ago where we got that turned up and uh, ready to go. Excellent. So I'll keep you guys informed on that. The, the goal here is to have a, uh, a full admin account for myself and then a more or less full admin account for uh, Jim, Irene, and Sue. Um, reason being is I don't know that you're ever going to need to go kind of under the hood and make some of the, the structural changes, like if we ever have to update DNS entries or anything like that. Uh, but I want you to be able to make changes to the, the content of the site if you want to go in and upload a, a new copy of a, a meeting notes or an agenda or 
we we signed an ordinance and you happen to have it and you uploaded it i want you guys to be empowered to be able to to do that sort of thing that it's not just going to be me doing everything all the time okay next item on the agenda is the noise ordinance uh, this was advertised in the newspaper on may the 18th and is ready for adoption at thursday's board of supervisors meeting so we should all have the the final copy that was advertised i've seen no issue with it it was exactly what we had discussed before and based on the the changes that we had mentioned to andy about filling in that chart the rest of the way um i think it's it's ready for showtime on thursday night okay next up is building maintenance uh this is one of the the more fun topics on the agenda uh, the meeting room renovations, we have received quotes from uh, Incus Construction. Mike Rail will be giving us a, a new quote. His first quote was only for drop ceiling, new lighting, and the removal of the pipes. Uh, we also have uh, several contractors that took measurement, and we had one person out to look at the HVAC. So as a, a real high level, one of the things that we're trying to do for everybody's understanding before we go back to in-person meetings is we want to rehab the, the meeting room space a little bit. This is... Uh, going to consist of a couple of things that we're, we're getting quotes for. We're looking to replace the windows in the main meeting room as they're in, in dire need of being replaced. They're original to the building and there's less glazing there than there, there really should be on every single one of the panes. Uh, and we're looking to put in a drop ceiling, which will help with the heating and cooling. Um, so we're gather, gathering quotes to do that, but we're looking to hopefully move on that relatively quickly. Um, one of the things that I had sent an email and I just didn't get a chance to call Mike about is he had originally given us a quote for drop ceiling with a two by four panel sort of uh, implementation, two foot by four foot. Um, I'd like him to give us a quote with a two by two panel arrangement simply because there are a number of things that you can do with the two by two panels that you cannot do with the two by fours. So uh, that could be th things ranging from certain light fixtures to speakers that are installed directly into the the hanging arrangement uh, to things like the overhead projector mounts that they, they generally are made for a two by two format rather than a two by four. So I'll follow up hopefully within the next couple of days with him and see if we can't get a revised quote or uh, what can be done there about that. Um, number of the things for the, the technical aspects of the room have been purchased. Uh, the only things that I have not purchased yet, and I, I may need authorization for a little more, more funding to do that, is the, the main microphone and speaker arrays. Uh, I bought a lot of the structural stuff, the cabinets, the, the, the new switch for the network when we move it over so that we're not daisy chaining like six switches together in the office. Um, all the wiring that we need, all the ends, um, that kind of stuff is there. Um, Irene, I, I may need to uh, put the ask out for help for John and some of the road crew guys to help me move that safe, uh, because if I try to move that by myself, I will most likely kill myself. Um, but uh, we just need to shift that from one wall to the other so that I can start hanging that uh, uh, set of fixtures that we need for mounting up all the equipment. Just the comments. Um, if you could uh, please, like next time you stop in the building, put the requirements for the drop ceiling there's a paper on the wall. Just write that in there. This way, whoever comes in and gives us a quote can take a look at that. Okay, absolutely. I'll probably swing by either later today or tomorrow because I, I think you had said that there are checks that need to be signed. Yep. So I'll, I'll pop through and take care of that and I'll put it put it on there. Other than, like I said, the two by two rather than the two by four, uh, there's really not a, a strong requirement. Simple is better. I don't want to have anything fancy. Like one of the things that we had received was like a, a stamped tin sort of sort of format i think that that would be a little overpowering for the space and is probably more more cost than what we'd want to do mm -hmm. just simple white panels on the ceiling reuse the original light fixtures well those aren't tin panels they're actually they just look like tin they just look like tin yeah. um yeah. even so i think that might be a little busy <laughs> for the room it looks nice but it's a very large space and to have that going on across the entire ceiling um so uh, he had Mike had suggested that for the office. Oh, for just for the office. Mm -hmm. e even mm -hmm. so, I, I'm I'll defer to the the group logic on this, but I, I think for for what we're doing, simpler is better. Just plain white. Is 
either everybody froze or nobody has a <laughs> <laughs> nobody has nobody has a crossword about it. But yeah, the ceiling um, tiles can be painted. So mm -hmm. the, ones, the, the whole room needs to be painted. There's there's so much work that needs to be done in there, and I'm crossing my fingers that uh, we get more people to respond. I'm just underwhelmed at the lack of response. I think I've reached out now to 16 contractors. Yeah. So I'm just looking at my calendar Wednesday. I'll probably be in the office and make some more phone calls. So. Irene, can you address for the uh, population where part of that money's coming from? Oh, okay. So the renovations for the, um, to renovate the meeting room is what we budgeted for it. There is a, I believe there's probably some money in the budget from for 2019, 2020. I want to say the budget is about $54,000 for building improvements in general. So um, a little bit here and there, uh, we've been utilizing some of the funds. Um, so the windows are, are part of that budget, the, but the windows actually fall within 2020's budget. Uh, 2021's budget, I want to say, is about $54,000. So uh, soon I took a look at the shades. I'm going to get um, some quotes on the shades in the office. We need... Um, at uh, blackout shades would be the best. You know, those shades may not fit the new window openings as well as, as the prior ones. So yes, there's about $54,000 in the budget that was budgeted for 2020 ones for general building improvements. And we want to get this meeting room up and running and, and the best that we can to serve the public so that we have a better experience so that, you know, there's no, oh, can you speak louder so that, you know, Peter can, I'll uh, place all the information that we see here on our screens up on a screen in, in the actual meeting room itself. So we're hoping to make it a much better environment. So yes, for 2021, the budget is roughly $54,000 for building improvements. And uh, Jim, just as a follow-up on that, one of the things, and I think this is kind of where you were you were alluding to, we're expecting to get some funding with the, uh, it's the is the ARD, Irene? With the ARD, COVID? American Rescue Plan. Yep. Yeah, ARP, yes. thank you. Yep. Um, where there's some funding expected to come our way around that that we could use for similar things like uh, additional building renovations uh, as we had talked about moving the office back to where the garage is and shifting things around there once we have that money because we're not obviously going to put uh, put all of our, our chickens uh, or count our chickens before they hatch in that respect but uh, we we will have another source of funding to be able to do these things that we would not have normally right. okay uh, now that we've covered that, unless there's anything else, uh, we'll move on to the next item, which is the removal of the chemicals from the garage. Um, we received a... You can get out of there anytime you want to. Rather uh, Just long uh, quote from Elk Environmental. Um, the difficult thing for Elk to quote is they don't really know what we have. Honestly speaking, we don't know what we have. We just have big 55-gallon drums and boxes and buckets of God only knows what because it's just been kind of dumped there for decades. Um, I unfortunately think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tell elk to come out and do what they have to do and get it out of here. Otherwise, there's it's not moving, and it needs to leave. It's a, it's a danger. It's a liability. And really, I don't want to open-end open -end this, but regardless of the cost, we need to do it. It has to get done, and it should have been done years ago. Absolutely. And it's going to free up space for the guys to use for equipment. Yeah. So I would say let's let's call Elk this week, Sue, and tell them, like, come out, pick it up, do what you got to do. Well, okay, you need to motion to do that. Okay. Plus, this contract needs to be signed and everything, so you really should read over I it. I didn't see a signature at the bottom. I read I read yeah, over there's, it. There's there's yeah, a lot in here. There um, is. Uh, no, wait, let me go through it real quick. There yeah, is there, a signature line. I mean, they're not, um, yeah, um, page seven. Page seven. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. I see it now. So I think you guys should read over everything. Yeah, let's let's do that Thursday night. I want to read through it one more time because there is a lot of stuff on here, and it's a lot and of like page, if this and this. Page ten needs a signature. Yes, we could do um, what we've done previously, like limit the amount to a certain amounts, and then revisit. Well, yeah, it. I mean, if you want to read through it, I mean, I don't know what barrels, drums are well, disintegrating and what aren't maybe you just want to get rid of the disintegrating ones oh no i want to get i want to get rid of all of them like i just want i want them all gone 
Um, if it's, unless it's something we're using, and I, to my knowledge, the road crew guys don't have like a bulk drum. Right, but oil. I'm saying if you want to, if you want to limit the cost, then you need to cross off or let me know what you don't want to go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what I thought Irene meant. So. Well, oh no, what I think Irene is saying that like, we'll authorize it up to a certain cost. And if they come back and say it's going to be more then we just have to get a change order. Like well, we there, is a, there is an estimated cost on here. Yes. Yeah. On page five. It's twelve thousand dollars. Okay. And I know yeah. that's a lot of money, but, but these, needs... these drums have been sitting there for like you said, Peter, decades. decades. Some of them are some well, of them. I, like I said, I'm afraid I'm sure to my, my dad used to do a lot of the <clears> maintenance <throat> and um, repairs on the equipment. And I know that he those are probably from when he was there and he hasn't been <laughs> in office since nineteen ninety five. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my, we could tip those barrels up with the whole bottoms out of them for all we know. Yeah. So uh, back back to the, the statement only about one that, the only one that Jim uh, Jim the only one that Butch uses, I think, is the isn't there one with motor oil in it? I think. And I don't I think, even know how much is in it. Yeah, I him. I'd have to look. I don't think he's actively using that because we haven't been doing the oil changes ourselves. We've been having. Well, he he did one of the pieces of equipment i know but after, yeah after yeah i'll, I'll double check me. my my concern though with the 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 bit that we have here and irene to your point i think it would be prudent to authorize up to a certain amount and then require a change order after that is um right in that same area it says this is only an estimate and the prices are quoted pending a chemist being on site to identify any unknowns and verify that right. the wastes listed on the inventory are accurate right um and that's that's the bit that concerns me because like i don't I don't know what has been dumped into any of those things. I don't know what some of some of the unlabeled boxes of strange powder are. Could be, could be weed killer. It could be stuff for killing mice. It could be, could be anything. Um, so I would, I would say we authorize up to a certain amount. But let's let's all read through it one more time because it is a, it's a very long document filled with a ton of acronyms. And has a lot of different like if it's this then it's this much if it's this then it's this much if it's this then it's this much um let's all really give that a high level of scrutiny but really at the end of the day i, I think we're just going to have to do it because it, it needs to be done it should have been done and hasn't been done and yes while twelve thousand dollars is a lot it's pro it's preferable to having to clean up some sort of like environmental hazard spill or uh, God forbid somebody has an accident in the garage and gets exposed to a lot of really nasty caustic chemicals. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we'll touch more on that on Thursday night. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Berks County Association of Township Officials. Uh, there's a copy of the attachment in our, our packets that came with the invoice for dues. And I believe we had authorize the payments of dues at the last meeting. Well, I don't usually put payments of dues on the agenda. Do I need to do that? Oh, no, 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 no. But I mean, I think bill. we had actually talked about that because there was a change to no. that. No, no that was Which... the um, public works. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they're I'm not thinking... charging us dues because of COVID. They're just uh, thank you. You know, yep. extending the dues. Okay. Then, that's, um, that's what I was thinking. My apologies. So, yeah. yeah. That's just a standard bill. Yeah. Um, and this is they want to they want to know if you have any um, if you want if so you have to pass a resolution um, to have PSATs correct any problems. Anyway, re read that first page. It's, it's I think it's a little confusing, but maybe it's just me. It's like we if we if we want a a problem corrected not just with, not just locally within the township but uh, you know within this county or state mm -hmm. they want a resolution to go to the county association and then they'll send it to PSATs and then PSATs will present it to the state is what I'm getting out of it. Yeah, let's read over that. And I might have some questions for Andy about what that actually translates to in terms of But the thing is, they need this back by June 30th. Okay, well, I mean, we'll hopefully have an answer for like Thursday night. Mm -hmm. But 
before we do anything, I want to I want to figure out what the exact nuts and bolts of that are and what they're what they're asking for in the resolution. It's the first time we've ever gotten anything like that. Like yeah, that's that's that's, that's it's new to me. Yeah. Just in the time that I've been on the board. Okay. okay Irene. Irene, I'll make sure you get the invoice so you can pay that. Thank okay. you. And say, Irene, if with you with the legal background, if there's anything that sticks out at you or is a cause for concern, please identify it. But I'll, I'll send a line out to Andy asking him for input. I'm sure of the number of other townships that he represents, this is something they've all had to do. So I'm curious what what this actually means because the the letter they gave you is short and doesn't really give you a lot of detail about what what the ask is or what's needed. So I, I see what Sue's point is. It, it we would have to go through them rather than directing it to PSATs ourselves. Yeah, I think that's the gist of it. Yeah, I want to be sure though. Yeah, but I I, I, I think you're right. Yeah, I'd I'd much rather be able to um, address it through PSATs directly. Okay, so then we may not we may not want to even do that then, but let's let's find out exactly what what that entails and then we'll we'll decide on Thursday night. Okay, next up is a largely informational. The letter of credits for Marlin and Wilma Martin has increased for uh, $46,713.37 to $51,384.71. Uh, JNN Troutman LLC increased from $154,253.23 to $169,678.55. These are regular, normal auto increases, and uh, again, largely for informational purposes only. Next item on the agenda is the community shredding event. This is uh, scheduled to take place on so uh, Saturday, June 12th, 2021 at 10 a.m., going until 2 p.m. at the Lower Heidelberg Township Building. There will be a four box per vehicle maximum. And that's the shredding event that we participate in. There's like, I want to say six or seven communities or municipalities. And then in the past, they had charged us. I think the last two years, um, this bank, I believe, is the one that's, mm -hmm. I don't have the paper with me uh, for some reason. I think this bank is the one that's kind of like. They've sponsored it. Yeah. And, and they, the last two years, they covered the cost. They didn't charge the cancer for any cost. Okay. Okay, that is the last item on the agenda. So we'll move into the comments section. Um, I have three things uh, for the community association. The community yard sale is scheduled for June fifth, twenty twenty one. If the weather's nice and you're able to get out, uh, take a walk and see what your neighbors are selling. Next is the they're doing a second spring cleanup on June twelfth, twenty twenty one. I'd imagine it's going to probably focus largely around the, the playground, the ball field, and the, the general recreation area around the township building. Uh, so if you're available to come out and help pull weeds or rake or shovel or whatever needs to be done, uh, help is always appreciated. Next is they are selling Justino's sandwich coupons again this year. They're $6.50. Uh, they're actually very, very good sandwiches. So if you're on the market for having a little sandwich coupon that you can run down to Myerstown and, and get a sandwich from that sandwich shop. Uh, you should certainly pick some up because it's uh, delicious and helps support the community. Uh, Irene, do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, just a couple of things. Circling back to the ARP plan, I, I sent out an email. I just wanted to get everyone's thought. Um, Sue's awesome, and uh, she you're going to be participating in that Zoom meeting on Monday, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I did start, I, I, excuse me, I started listening to the PSATS one. I didn't get very far, but um, yeah. I think the PSATS one is probably going to be more informative. Yeah. Anyway, okay, there's, sorry. There's, I, no, 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 no. I've been uh, going to the PSATS website regularly, so there's the slideshow for the PSATS uh, presentation. It's a little bit more than, than what they've been putting out on their webpage, um, and I've just been trying to track everything. Um, I took a brief look at what the Treasury Department uh, put out as well. It's 134 pages of a uh, lot of uh, legalese. So, um, there's not much more um, that PSATs put out with respect to any further guidelines. And I sent out that email because I just, what they want 
for the most part is to make sure that we're not misusing the funds. There's more strict guidelines as to what it can be used. Our, our idea of revamping the garage to make that into a, a new office is, is within those um, guidelines because it's going to allow the public better access to the building in the event of uh, a new pandemic or a continuing pandemic because despite what people think we're still not out of the woods. Um, so what I propose is let's go through everything that we want to do from, you know, all, all, all the aspects of the room renovation that we want to do, but write it up more so like we would almost a grant saying we want to do this because of this. We want to do this because of this. And this way we've got a plan in place. And so if we get audited with respect to usage of those funds, we could just say, well, here's what our plan is. And we could hand that over. We keep the receipts, you know, everything just gets detailed and a very clean follow through plan listing to the contractors in a copy of their insurance and bonding paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. So that everything is neat and clean and very organized and orderly. This way there's no questions as to how we use the funds. Um, part of that also, is reiterating, I'd like to use $10,000 of this funds to the Marion Township Community Association for playground renovation purposes because they were negatively impacted in their abilities to do fundraising over the past year as well. Again, that's that's another legit use. If I could ask the rest of you guys, because I know Sue and I have been taking a look at at, at the, the PSATS information kind of routinely. Every week I'm, I'm checking on it. If you guys want to take a look at their requirements and see if there's anything else you would like to use the, the funding for um, so that we can assist our community and, and with any efforts. I'm not aware of anything else that was negatively impacted that we could use the funds for, but if there's anything else that you guys can think of, I honestly haven't lived in, in, in Marion Township for all that long. So if there's something else that you feel needs attention, um, and we should be getting roughly about 95,000 this year and $95,000 next year. The funds have to be used within the next four years. If we divvy off $10,000 each year for the community association, I know Peter, we had talked about that on our last meeting. Um, we generally budget $10,000 a year for uh, out of our general funds for the community association. So, um, and I know, I think on their last meeting, correct me if I'm wrong, their funds are run about 75, they have about $7,500 in their funds. So, you know, it, it, all together, you know, we're looking at giving them something, you know, close to $50,000, the DCNR grants, et cetera, et cetera. We want to make a good impact in the community and help out. So that's part of what we can do with our ARP funds as well. So um, if you guys can just help me put together some information, tweak it, this way we have a written plan, a hard copy written plan, and we keep a folder and we update it. And this way, in the event we're audited, um, we have a guidebook that, that we follow. Um, on the same note, I know Sue has pointed out previously that there are agencies that will monitor how the funds are used and depending on how much you receive is depending on how much um, they'll charge us. And one of the agencies for the amount that we would receive, it was between three to $5,000. Um, when Rick had stopped out the office to help me update the QuickBooks information, I said, Rick, you know, can you give me just a, a quick opinion about this? He says he didn't see any need to, to utilize an outside agency. He says, you know, you just have to, to document what you're using for a sticks of the guidelines. So I, I, I don't think there's anything extraordinary that we're doing. Um, and I think as long as we're careful with the wording of our plan, I think we're definitely going to we have such a narrow scope of what we want to do with the funds and that's targeting revamping uh, the garage into office space so that we have safer access uh, for the public and the space is utilized better. I mean, that's really it. And, and addressing the lack of funding and fundraising capabilities for the Marion Township Community Association. I really can't think of anything else. And that really fits within the guidelines that PSATS has put out. Yep. I completely agree. So, uh, I'm all for the, especially with the community association, giving them a, a component of the 2022 funding or even the 2021 funding yeah. carried over, but um, helping them get the grant together and really coming to the table with a high funding amount, both from a, a regular budget, some of the stuff from the ARP, 
as well as trying to help them do some some aggressive fundraising like we had said about like donate x number of dollars and you can put a bench in you can yep. put a brick in with your name on it you can get your name put on a plaque solicit local businesses and, and people and see if we can't get interest from the community to help bring that dollar figure up for what the matching grant yeah. would, would match um I'll start putting together some some notes and some things uh, for a write up around the space renovations for converting the the rear garage space. Um, I may have to go out or maybe ask Butch to help me get measurements of the space, like total area. That way, I can start to draw like a, kind of a crude blueprint of what we need to do. Maybe even get a once we get done with the the main meeting room with the the drop ceiling and everything else, get some preliminary estimates from contractors of what it would cost so that we know where that fits into from a budget standpoint from the, the ARP funding um, and really just kind of go from there, get it together that way we're ready to go and we have everything documented and we could code things very easily in QuickBooks for this was this cost, it was associated to ARP project number one, ARP project number two, ARP project number three, yep. so. Very, very easy to do and I'd like to keep it in that grant kind of writing format so that it's very detailed um, and we have all the contractors information, we have all the bids, we have everything and it's nice and neat and clean. And so in the event that we get an audit, we say, here's our materials. This is exactly what we did. We followed your guidelines and this is the information. So precisely. Yeah. yeah. And we, we have, we, with respect to the funding that other locations are getting, you know, larger townships, larger boroughs, et cetera, we really have a small amount to keep track of. So, but I'm hoping it could have a huge impact in our community. And that's, that's my goal. Yeah. Okay. So I have more time to make some. Oh, comments. you, you have as much time as you'd like. Irene. Um, uh, I guess like in a, a little way, it's a question for Sue also. So now that we have the website up, um, I'm hoping that we could start getting some of the ordinances on the, the website. Sue, I guess, what's your ideas about organizing the ordinances that we have? I know everything's in the book. I've looked through the book, um, but we want to get them organized so that if we need to look up something, it's a little bit easier rather than leafing through things. Well, I had started to try to put the, the how, how, what do I say, like the subjects together, like all of the when the alleys were named alley A, alley B, alley C, like they're not, they're like all over the ordinance book, like put those together. Okay. So right now the index is only listed chron uh, um, numerical. Okay. Ordinance one, ordinance two, ordinance three, ordinance one. Like I want to not do that and just like categorize them by subject instead. Yeah. I think it will be easier to look for something. Like, oh, absolutely. You have to go through the whole list to look for the ordinance that you want to look for. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So I want to work with that with you and, and I want to see if we could get Dan on top of that. Well, as and that well. was, I was going to suggest that having yeah. Dan scan things in and yep. Cause yep. I, I just don't, I don't have time to do that. No, no, no. God, no, God, no. So I want to help you with that. Um, and then I had one more thing to add. Um, so I don't know, Peter, can we see the building behind you in the picture? Um, so if I don't know, Jim, if you drove up to the building, I don't think is there anyone else on this? On this no, it's it's the group of us. Stuff. I mean, okay. pub, obviously public forum, but there, right. it's just us. Yeah. So on the other side of the building, you could see the small addition of that little garage that was added on. I don't know how many years ago, and it's painted white. I guess uh, I wanted everyone's feedback. How do we feel about opening up a mural painting contest to the high school um, for next year? And uh, I guess if well, it, before you go on, can I interrupt? Yeah, that yeah, one side is at the property line. If you yeah. go to paint that long side, you have to go on that other person's property. Well, we would ask. We would ask permission. Um, um, good luck. <laughs> yes, I was going to say that maybe I, I like the idea, but that may yeah. be easier said than done. Yeah, <laughs> pretty pretty please. We, we're trying to beautify the the property, so I guess that could be the the starting point. Asking if they would give us permission for a certain time frame where we could, could go, and if we could furnish the paints and, and materials to get it done. Paint is not that expensive, but again, just another aspect to beautify the building as well as again reaching out to the community and giving the community sense of ownership to have high school kids say, Hey, you know, we did that. This is our township building. We can be involved as well. So. Yeah. I, I like the idea. Okay. So I'll work yeah. on nice neighbor relations too. <laughs> <laughs> 
And uh, just as a final point, I believe I received the information from the bank to go ahead with the credit card uh, process. Um, I just, uh, I haven't been in the office all that much because uh, we were under quarantine. So I'll be getting down there and catching up on some stuff. So. Okay. Jim, do you have any comments? Well, Irene may be able to answer my question. I'm wondering with the uh, COVID regulations that have been changing, um, should we be revisiting things like letting Little League use the field and opening the playground and and all the things that we've had to do because of COVID, the car show, et cetera, et cetera. Is it time to do that yet or should we be yeah, more I think, cautious? Thank you for reminding me about that. Yeah, Peter. Um, so CDC guidelines have changed. Now you're allowed to be indoors. Uh, vaccinated people are allowed to be indoors without a mask. Um, I guess my, my question is along the same lines as Jim. Um, can we resume in-person meetings for June? Um, we'd have to have people go on the honor system as far as asking them to mask up if they're unvaccinated. Um, even though I am fully vaccinated, I would continue to mask up indoors because I feel the risk is still high from what I'm seeing at my regular job. We are still seeing uh, a large number of COVID cases. So the pandemic is still here, just more people are vaccinated and, and the numbers are dropping. So I think with respect to the car show, it's too late in the year because they would have to advertise. Um, but could we reach out to Little League? Because now there's not outdoor restrictions. So, I mean, Peter, what's your feedback on that? I, well, let I me just go back to the car, uh, The Little League, they're pretty much, they wind down at the end of the school year. Yeah. So, I don't know that they want yeah. to, but, but I mean, we can, you know. Yeah. We, yeah well, I mean, I, I'm now that uh, there's enough of the population vaccinated and a lot of the restrictions are being lifted, as you had said, Irene, we're not fully out of the woods on this. The danger is still there, but it's less of a risk inherently. Um, I'm not opposed to letting people use the, the field again, little league or otherwise. Um, we just have to make sure that again, we just maybe put up a sign where it's like, yes, please try to still maintain, you know, social distancing, wear a mask, et cetera. Um, signage isn't that expensive. We could get something like that made pretty easily and quickly and let the little league know that if they want to play any games there or use it for practices or, or do things in the, the quote unquote off season um, that they, they can again. I'm not opposed to that if we want to make that motion as a board. Well, and then the other field. thing is you got to get the field in shape because the field yeah. is awful. Yeah, well, and that might be a good thing to do. Bring that, up. that might be a good thing to do on that second spring cleanup, June 12th, try and coordinate some of the, the road crew to be there and help clean the field, um, drag the, the dirt thing with that, that I think it used to be like an old box spring mattress or something, whatever the apparatus is that they use to, to, to prep the, the dirt in the infield, get that in, in good shape so that people could actually start to use it because it, it needs a little bit of TLC from, mm -hmm. from having sat for quite a while. How do you feel about in-person meetings? I'm not inherently opposed to it. The The only thing that I would say is if we're all wearing masks, we will definitely want me to get some sort of speaker and microphone system set up, even if it's not the end state one that we want to put in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. I will need to rig something up because it will be very difficult for people to hear mm -hmm. anything that we're saying. It'll be very difficult to record anything that we're saying onto the Zoom session like we are right now with that mask present, which I, I think it's a great idea to, to continue to wear the masks. But if we are going to do in-person meetings, we want to have some sort of AV situation in place. Oh, so then I guess um, if we could discuss it again on Thursday as to when you think you'd be able to get everything um, set up. I mean, ideally, I'd love to do an in-person June meeting. Um, I can certainly pick up some masks and we could pick up some hand sanitizer to have available. Uh, I, I don't mind doing that, but, you know, we have to... We have to hope that the public will be considerate and those that are vaccinated and unvaccinated, et cetera. It's just asking people politely to please maintain a mask if you're not vaccinated for the health and, and safety of others. So yeah, let me actually, I'll send an email out. I'll send you a list of what we would need. I'll send everybody specifically a list of what we would need from a speaker and microphone standpoint. Okay. Um, temporary speakers easy enough to do. Yeah. Uh, we won't buy the in-ceiling ones, but we would still be able to use the same microphone array with the wireless mics that we were looking at long-term. So I'll, I'll adjust 
what I was going to suggest that we buy. And if we can get it in time for the June Thursday night board meeting, we can certainly do that. And we'll continue to broadcast it for on Zoom for anybody that happens to miss the, the notice or uh, has, just can't get there or doesn't want to be there for uh, health concerns that we'll, we'll start essentially doing the both at the same time. Yeah, and I'll, I'll check the system to see how much is left in our communications budget. And certainly some of the those uh, items will fall into building improvements too. So, um, and Sue, do you need notice to advertise in the newspaper if we're gonna back, be back in person? No, I believe I advertised it as, um, I'd have to look at the advertisement. I think it was advertised as until further notice. Uh, I, I'd have to yeah. look at the advertisement. I don't it, remember. It, it might not be a bad idea to just put something in the paper to say, like, once we actually decide, yes, we're doing this for June, just a notice to say that Marion Township Board of Supervisor meetings will once again be, be held in person, but they will also mm -hmm. be available through Zoom. Yeah, or, I, I don't remember. I'd have to look and see how I worded it. I can't remember. Yeah. And then, you know, and, and word of mouth travels fast because Jim knows we've had a lot of angry residents in the community that just weren't magically aware that we we're doing this by Zoom, even though this has been going on for over a year. And there's a notice on the bulletin board and Sue's put notices on the doors. So there's been um, a notice on the door since we closed the building last year. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, so th there's money in the budget for, for what you want to do, Peter. So please. Okay. I'll send the yeah. email out and if everybody's okay with it, I'll get, get the stuff ordered. Like yeah. I said, it's half of it's going to be the permanent solution. The other half of it, principally the speakers, because we don't have anything to mount them to on the ceiling are probably going to be temporary things that we put on like the windowsill and I'll try to make them look a slight bit presentable. Thank you, Jim. I completely forgot about that. I may continue to wear my mask forever. I haven't had a cold. I haven't had regular <laughs> flu. Nor mm -hmm. flu cases were down tremendously because we were wearing oh, masks. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up, I heard through the grapevine. I don't know how accurate our grapevine is, but I heard that Gary Herb is uh, is doing well. He's recovering. Our this is our former SEO, and uh, hopefully he'll be back to, to normal very soon. So I just wanted to know that him and his family know that we are praying for his total recovery and look forward to seeing him soon. Yeah, we, we all absolutely wish Gary the best. We hope he gets better soon from what yeah. he's been fighting against for the past couple of months now. But um, uh, like you had said, Jim, he's certainly in our thoughts and our prayers. Okay, any other comments, Jim? No, I think that's plenty today. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Sue, do you have any comments? Um, just one. Um, we need to have a zoning hearing, um, and the current oh, yeah. zoning hearing board members do not have the current Western Berks joint zoning. So, um, would you be willing to have that printed out so I can give one to each of the board members, zoning hearing board members, and also have some in the office? Um, we had some of the old zoning ordinances in the office for random people would come in and say, I want to look at it or I want to buy it. And, um, so yeah, what are I'm, your thoughts on that? I'm all for getting it printed out. I think especially the zoning hearing board should have a copy of what mm -hmm. they're going to be deciding against or, or on, I should say, not against, but um, the decision-making aspect of it should be well-informed and we should have a couple of copies in the building for mm -hmm. inspection or if somebody says like, I want to take this with me, how much is it? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I'd have it printed at JDM just because it'll be a little more professional than. Oh yeah, that. yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't see the, the amount of paper and ink that go into that. It would be not cost effective for us it's to print over, it ourselves. It's over two hundred pages. Yeah, yeah. So it would definitely be a JDM thing, and it would be something that I. It may cost a slight bit more, but have them like spiral bind it. Right. Right. Okay. So, uh, Jim, Jim, Irene, what are your thoughts on getting the okay to sue to print out like? Uh, like 10 copies that way we have them well zoning hearing board is five i think the attorney for the zoning hearing i don't know if you want him to have it i can ask him i'd, if I'd like it copy. I'd... i i know he has the email copy um and then maybe five or just the office just, yeah just general use that's kind of where i had landed on 10 if it has to be 11 so be it okay. but uh, i think 10 is probably a good number to start with 
Okay. Do you want to make a motion for that now, Thursday? Oh, I mean, I'll do it now as long as, like, Jim, Irene, what are your thoughts on it? Oh, yeah. That's okay. a good idea. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll make the motion to authorize the secretary to have 10 copies of the current zoning printed out at JDM. Sue, I know JDM is closed. Is there a second? Is oh, there second, a second, sorry. Irene, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, sorry, what? No, just a quick question. I know JDM is um, close and it's a local business. Have we ever really checked printing prices elsewhere, like at Staples? No. Um, if you could get a number from JDM and then I could run over to Staples, whether the one in Wyoming or the one in Lebanon, just to get a difference in price. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so about saving money. Oh, yeah. yeah. We could yeah. probably even just call Staples. Well, and I'm thinking yeah. I can email it to them yeah. and look at it and mm. yeah. say, this is how much it's going to cost. Yeah. I, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, yeah. I mean... I've had to email things to like Office Depot before to have them printed out. So it would just be getting somebody live on the phone to say, hey, I'm going to email this. Can you tell me how much it's going to cost? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we need to amend the motion so that it's not JDM specifically for the printing? Probably. Okay. So I'll make a, <laughs> I'll make a motion to amend the prior motion so that uh, the secretary is authorized to print 10 copies of the current zoning. At a professional Second. location. At, at a professional location. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. All right, we'll do that. Okay, very good. In that case, if we have no other items of business, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 1027 a.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right, meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Have a good Thank rest of the day, everybody. Yes, have a Thank great you. day. Thank you. Yep. Take care. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye.